Hey y'all, welcome to my channel. This is Elizabeth with Mad for Macrame and today we'll be making this adorable little bunny basket. To make this little bunny basket, you'll need Bobbini's five millimeter braided cord, an eight millimeter crochet hook, scissors, and a stitch marker and darning needle. If you purchase one of the DIY kits that are available on my shop, all of these items will be provided for you, plus a free pattern. So I will link that in the description for anybody that, that's interested. First, we're gonna start off with a magic ring. So go ahead and pull some cord out. When making a magic ring, everybody has their own way to do it. I'm just going to show you how I do it. So take the tail end of your cord and lay it in your hand. Pinch it with your thumb and wrap that cord around three fingers. When you get to the back side, make an X and kind of hold that in place with your pinky and your thumb. Then take your hook and go under that first cord, pull the second one under, and give it a twist. At this point, you need to chain one. So I like to just go ahead and grab that cord and chain one. And that's the magic ring. Okay, now that you have your magic ring, we're going to do six single crochet in this ring. And to do a single crochet, you stick your hook inside the hole, pull up a loop, yarn over, and pull through both. I'll show you again. So you stick your hook in the hole, pull up a loop, yarn over, and pull through both. So that's two. We need six. These little V's that are in the back, those are your stitches. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. Once you have your six, you take the tail and you pull that circle closed. And with this braided cord, you have to really give it a good tug. Now to close this circle, we need to do a slip stitch. So go back in that first stitch. And I kind of did mine a little too tight, but it'll work. A slip stitch, you stick your hook through goodness. Pull that yarn through and instead of pulling up a loop, you're just going to go ahead and pull through. And there's your, your little circle. Okay, now for round one, we're going to increase. And what increase means is you put two single crochets in each stitch. You're increasing the size, you're doubling it. So your stitches are those little V's that we counted before. So here's our first one. Stick your hook in, single crochet just like before, pull up a loop, yarn over, and pull through both. Now that's our first stitch on this round. At this point, if you want, you can use a crow, not a crochet hook. You can use a stitch marker. It kind of helps you keep count that that's number one. So when we get back to this, we know to stop. So we're going to put two of those in that same stitch. So we need the second one. And the next one, and 
and you're going to work your way all the way around. Once you get done with that round, you should have 12 stitches for round two. You do a single crochet and then an increase. So you're going to do one in the first one, two in the second one, one, two, one, two. You just keep going. So let's do the first one so we can put that stitch marker back in. So there's one. Two in this one. One. Two. One. And just keep going. Okay, when you get to the end of this round, you should have 18. For round three, we're gonna do two single crochets and then a double or an increase. So one, one, two. One. So we did one, one, and then an increase. So this one will get two. And just keep working that one, one, two. I'll meet you back at the end of this round. Okay, when you get to the end of this round, you should have 24 stitches. I counted. We're to 24. Now we're going to do the last round on our base. So for this one, instead of going under both of those pieces of cord, we're just going to go under the back loop. So instead of both, we're going to work in this back loop only. You're just going to single crochet all the way around, working in that back loop. You should have 24 at the end. So here's the first one. Don't forget your stitch marker or to keep count. I can't count, so that's why I use the stitch marker. And what this does is it kind of makes the, the base look finished off, I guess. So when you get to the end of that round, I wanted to show you, see how this starts to curl up? You would think that the basket's gonna go this way but actually it's not it will sit like this so the good part about this cord is it's easy to handle and move it holds its shape very well so there is the base of your basket Now we're going to start making the sides of the basket. And to do this, I've heard it called a couple different things, a weave stitch or a basket stitch. It's once you figure it out, once you have done it a couple times, you know 
but in the beginning it's really hard to figure out where to put your hook. I'm going to try to explain it the best I can, especially on this first round. I think it's the most difficult. So when you're here, when you're done doing the single crochet all the way around in the back loop, the first stitch we're going to do is an invisible join. So you're going to pull out a little cord. You're going to make this loop a little bit bigger in the first stitch you're going to bring your yarn through and grab that grab that cord and pull it through take your hook out hang on to it because it wants to slide back through then it's hard to see but right here is where we're going to put our hook through you stick your hook through that V pull up a loop I'm going to show you this again and then put that original loop on the hook too. So now you have two loops on your hook. Yarn over and pull through. So what it, what it basically does is it creates a vertical stitch. And then we're going to start with the, the weave stitch or the basket stitch. So we're going to put our hook in the same place on all the stitches all the way around so it goes right here it's just a single crochet basically through that different hole I guess so pull up a loop yarn over and pull through and we'll do the next one So here's this V, we're going to go in the middle, make sure it looks right on the back side, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. Again, and you're going to do that all the way around. Okay, so I made it back around to where we started with that invisible join. You have 24 stitches you're going to have 24 the entire time for the the rest of the basket i'm going to show you that invisible join again just because i think it's so hard to see and it takes a couple times to get the hang of it so pull pull your loop a little farther than you normally would and see how this was the first stitch we did that's where we did this invisible join before you're going to do that join on the first stitch that runs horizontally. So this one's vertical and these are going horizontal. So this is going to go under this first one that's running horizontal. So stick your hook through, pull that loop, okay, hang on to that loop, stick your hook through, The very next stitch, pull up a loop and then stick that on your hook. So now you have two. Yarn over and pull through both. Then, now you can see these V's. They're a lot more clear. That's where you're gonna make your stitches in those V's. And we start the next round. So this is round six. We'll do the same thing for the next 
couple rounds. Okay, I finished round six. We're gonna do the same thing for round seven. And we're gonna do the same thing for round eight. I'm finishing up round eight and I wanted to let you know that if you need some help with the basic crochet skills or that invisible join, I'm going to add a link in the description for Macrame by Cree, her channel. She has some really good videos about crochet and learning the basic skills of crochet. In particular, she has one with the invisible join. So I will put that in the description. Also, the bunny DIY kits, they'll be linked in the description and my shop. I sell all of this bobbinny cord if you're interested, check it out. So once you get here, this is our top row where we're going to make the ears. So I already did the invisible join. We're going to do basket stitches. We're going to do 10 of them to get ourselves to the front so we can start making the ears. Okay. So once you get to your 10th stitch that brings you to the front, then you're going to chain six, one, two, three, four, five, and six. And then this chain, if you flip it over to the back side, you can see that they have these these little um, little bumps here. That's where we're going to work our stitches. So the first one, the first little bump, it's kind of hard to get to. First, from the hook, you're going to do a slip stitch. And like I said, this is the hardest one to turn it around so I can get that last the last little back bump here you do a slip stitch that kind of just secures the ear at the bottom so there's your little ear so your next stitch here you're going to do three basket stitches to get to the other ear. So one, two, and three. Now you do the same thing for the second ear that we did for the first. So chain six. One, two, three, four, five, and six. After you chain six, the first one is a slip stitch. So you insert your hook, pull the yarn through, The next one is the half double, so yarn over, insert your hook, yarn over. Now you have three, yarn over, pull through all three. Then a double, yarn over, insert your hook, yarn over, you have three, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Another double, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, and then a half double, so 
yarn over, pull the loop, yarn over, pull through all three. Lastly, we do a slip stitch and just insert the hook. Pull that yarn through. Second ear done. Now you're back to your basket stitches again. You're going to work 11 of those. That'll get you back to the beginning. And then I'll show you how to finish it off. Okay. Now that you finished off those last basket stitches, it's time to cut the yarn. And I like to leave six, eight inches of the tail. So there's a couple different ways. You could just do a slip stitch or you can finish it off however you'd like, but this is how I do it. I cut the yarn and pull that cord through and then I'm gonna kind of make a fake stitch to pull that together. So just like the invisible stitch, I'm gonna take my hook and go through that first horizontal stitch and pull the cord through. And then the last stitch that we did, it's gonna go through the, the top. So what that does is it makes it look like the rest. Then you take these cords and tuck them and just hide them, same with the one, the tail. You just take these and hide them inside and clip the excess off and you're done. Thank you for watching my first tutorial ever. I hope I did okay. <laughs>